Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Bilal Mirza. I'm a postdoc in Hard B2K Center at UCLA. Today I'm going to talk about a machine learning based pipeline to identify post translation modification signatures from isopaternal induced cardiac remodeling. Uh, post translation modifications or PTMs refer to the covalent and generally enzymatic modification of proteins after protein biosynthesis. PTMs enable protein structural dy dynamics and functional diversity and play critical roles in regulating disease phenotypes. There are over 200 different types of PTMs identified by MS based proteomics. And one of the key features of PTM is the target amino acid, that is, which amino acid residue is modified and also the PTM type, that is which modification occurs on target amino acid. This figure highlights the fact that PTMs increase proteome, uh, proteomic diversity. There are around 19 to 20,000 protein coding genes in humans, and from each gene, multiple transcript isoforms can be generated by RNA processing, such as alternative splicing or mRNA editing. Proteins can be regulated by PTMs, and the proteome is estimated to encompass over 1 million proteins. Thus, uh, different post-translation modifications exponentially increase the complexity of the proteome relative to both transcriptome and genome. In this talk, I'm going to take the example of methionine oxidation, which is one of the 200 different types of PTMs. The sulfur containing amino acids such as methionine and cysteine are more easily oxidized than the other amino acids. And a reactive oxygen species or ROS can post translationally modify methionine into methionine sulfoxide or METO. Um, emerging evidence suggests that uh, METO can directly influence protein function and be associated with cardiovascular disease. Uh, METO also increases with age uh, in body tissues which is believed by some to contribute to biological aging. So this is the experimental design for data generation. The data set that we use in this study is taken from our previously published data in Scientific Data 2016. In this data set, we had treated six different genetic mouse strains uh, with isopaternal for 14 days. We collected the heart cell lysates sequentially at seven time points uh, day zero for control only, and day one, three, five, seven, 10, and 14 for both control and ISO to perform subcellular fractionation. The proteins are extracted and digested uh, with trypsin. Then we perform two dimensional RPLC separation uh, to identify peptides more accurately. We use Orbitrap MSMS, and the spectra obtained are searched with ProLucid against Unipro database to identify proteins and PTMs and eventually PTM sites are quantified. With this data set, we are able to identify 5,463 metocytes from 1806 modified proteins in control samples and 6,036 metocytes from 2020 proteins in isolated samples. Among those identified sites, there are 4,472 shared metocytes in 1484 proteins shared between control and isolated samples. Moreover, we have observed 1,564 iso-initiated meto meto sites and 991 iso-abolished sites. The total identified meto sites from whole data sets are 7,027, and the total modified meto proteins are 2,342. So before moving forward, I want to quickly discuss data set terminologies used in machine learning. Uh, the first is uh, training data set, which is used to fit parameters of the machine learning model. For example, weight connection between neurons in artificial neural networks. The second is validation data set, which allows evaluation of a model while tuning model hyperparameters. For example, number of hidden neurons in different layers. Part of the training data set can be set aside and used as validation set. Finally, we have test data set, which provides an unbiased evaluation of the final model fitted to the training data. So in summary, uh, training data set is used to fit the model. Validation data set is used to fine tune the, that model and test data sets provide uh, an unbiased evaluation of the model. 
this is the mouse family tree we obtained from Jackson Lab. It has 102 different strains which are classified into seven groups. Each group represents different genetic origin. For example, strains in the same group have smaller evolutionary distance compared to the strains in different groups. As can be seen from this table, we have three strains from group one, that is AJ, BAL CJ, and CJ, and one strain each from groups two, four, and six. For each strain, we collected biological samples at seven time points for control and six time points for ISO treatment. So in total, for, for each strain, we have 13 data points. Next, we divide our data set into training and test sets based on uh, genetic background. For that, we use uh, the uh, two following split criteria. There should be samples from a minimum of three, sam uh, three strains in training set, and there is no genetic group overlapping in training and test sets. With these criteria, there can be eight different training and testing splits, as can be seen in this table. For example, split one has AJ, BAL CJ, and CJ strains in the training set, and remaining three strains for test set. And we can have different combinations of strains in other splits. Um, most uh, machine learning methods cannot handle missing and incomplete data. Therefore, we use uh, following uh, filtering criteria before applying uh, machine learning methods. We select PTM sites which are quantified across all six mouse strains and across both control and ISO. The PTM sites should be identified at four time points or more. And the mean of abundance values from four or more time points is used to replace missing values at remaining time points. So a complete uh, PTM site will have 78 sample points because we have six strains, two treatment groups, and seven time points for control and six for ISO. So the first step in feature selection pipeline is uh, data pre-processing. The filter PTM abundance data is scaled so that values of each feature have zero mean and unit variance. Then the data is split into training and testing set based on genetic background. That is mouse strain samples from a family group used for training should not be used for testing. In the second phase, multiple feature selection methods are run, which can be encapsulated within cross-validation or stability selection to identify discriminative features in two different treatment types, that is control versus ISO. The selected features are then used to train a predictive model, and the selected features are also used to transform the test data to the reduced features phase. Finally, the accepted features are validated through uh, unbiased evaluation of the model on the test data, and we get the testing accuracy score. Uh, so feature selection in machine learning refers uh, to selecting a subset of relevant uh, attributes from high dimensional data. Feature selection methods are used in predictive modeling for one of the following reasons. Um, to overcome curse of dimensionality, or P greater than N problem. That is, there are a lot more covariates than the sample points. Also, feature selection methods are used for, uh, to reduce overfitting, facilitate faster training, and increase interpretability of data. In generally, feature selection methods can be uh, categorized into three different types, uh, filter, wrapper, and embedded. In the next slide, I will br briefly discuss these types. Filter methods select relevant features independent of any model. Uh, exam uh, example include different statistical uh, tests, correlation measures, and ranking methods from information theory like information gain. Filter methods generally do not consider best feature combination because they are univariate. Uh, they, for example, they explore dependency between each variable and outcome uh, individually. Wrapper methods search for best features uh, combination by training predictive models iteratively. Examples include recursive feature elimination, forward selection, Barota. Wrapper methods can be computationally expensive and at times uh, overfit as well. 
Finally, embedded methods have built-in feature selection mechanism. That is, they perform feature selection as part of model building. Uh, in terms of computation complexity, they are between filter and wrapper methods. Examples include lasso regression, el elastic net, and stability selection, etc. The first method that uh, we use uh, is recursive feature elimination. It is a wrapper method that requires an external model like support vector machine or random forest. Um, we use linear SVM because generally uh, linear uh, SVM performs better with p greater than n problem as compared to non-linear kernel SVM. Um, RFE repeatedly construct models and uh, remove low importance features. Uh, feature uh, importance in linear SVM can be obtained from SVM uh, weight vector and we can perform cross validation for optimal subset selection, or we can uh, predefine a subset size. Uh, this method can be computationally uh, expensive because it has to train multiple models. We also use Baroda method. This is also a wrapper method, but it is built around random forests. Uh, it is an all relevant approach as opposed to minimal optimal. The advantage of all relevant approach is uh, that it can provide complete understanding of the biological process underlying a disease. It performs statistically significant selection of uh, relevant features. For that, it creates shadow attribute for each original attribute by shuffling, by randomly shuffling values across in, in instances. And the shadow attribute is used as reference to decide which attributes are truly important. So the original attributes uh, which score better than maximum Z score among shadow attributes or MZ SA value are considered relevant. The wrapper methods discussed earlier are computationally expensive and in certain cases overfit. So we also uh, use stability selection. In stability selection, subsampling is used in conjunction, conjunction with L1 penalized uh, estimation, for example, lasso. This equation represents lasso model where b, uh, beta is the uh, coefficient vector, x is a p-dimensional input, and y is the response, and lambda is the regularization parameter. We can also use, stabil uh, in stability selection, we can also use subsampling with random weight perturbations, which is randomized lasso, and the second equation represents uh, this model. So the difference in, is the addition of weight uh, matrix W, which provides randomization uh, in variable selection. So with the second model, we have randomization. Uh, we are subsampling as well as in the selection uh, process for the variables. So this is uh, analogous to the bagging phenomena in uh, random forests. With this, uh, family-wise type 1 error rate can be controlled for finite sample size. And the results are much less sensitive to the choice of regularization. That is, uh, in stability selection, variable selection, uh, stability selection is variable selection consistent. So we remove the features which are not selected even once by randomly perturbing data many times. Uh, we employ a two-stage feature selection procedure to better tackle the uh, curse of dimensionality or p greater than n problems. Because for such problems, methods can be computationally very expensive and may also overfit. So in the first stage, we apply stability selection to filter out variables not selected even uh, once over several subsampling. So the input to stability selection is all the PTM sites, and the output are the PTM sites of interest. In the second stage, we use uh, recursive feature elimination or Barota to extract molecular signatures, and the input is the PTM sites of interest, which we obtained uh, from the previous step of stability selection. And the output is a set of PTM sites, typically two to five, uh, which are most uh, accurate on training sample or significant. Finally, we perform validation of these signatures on the testing data. For validation, we employ three classical predictive models. Um, the first one is support vector machine, which is a, ma a maximum margin classifier we use linear kernel and the regularization parameter is set to one. The second model used is random forest, which grows a multitude of decision trees 
to avoid the risk of overfitting. And we use Gini impurity splitting criteria. And the maximum features allowed per node is set to the square root of the total number of features. We also use logistic regression uh, with L2 penalty and set the regularization parameter to one. Uh, Slavity selection results are reported in this slide. So our initial data set after filtering had 289 uh, methionine oxidation sites. We run 60 iterations per split and there are 200 randomized models in each one of the stability selection. With that, uh, we were able to identify an average of 124.6 unique metocytes per split. So you can see uh, the number of metocytes are reduced to less than half. We are also able to identify 29 metocytes which are commonly appearing across all the eight uh, training and testing splits. Next, we, are, we will apply wrapper methods to identify the signature metocytes. So in order to identify signature metocytes, we employ both uh, SVM, RFE, and Baroda methods. For both these methods, we repeated 60 runs per split. Uh, with RFE, we evaluate subsets of uh, two, three, four, and five. And for Baroda, there's a maximum of 100 iterations allowed for the creation of shadow attributes. Input to both these methods are sites of interest we obtain from uh, stability selection. The output of uh, recursive feature elimination is, is a subset of accurate uh, meta sites, and the output to Barota uh, is all significantly relevant meta sites. Finally, we validate the signature meta sites using the predictive models on the testing data. This table lists the meta sites extracted per split. We only consider combinations with testing accuracy greater than 60%, and they have to appear more than once over 60 runs. As can be seen, uh, SVM RFE consistently achieve testing accuracies between 70 to 80%. On the other hand, Baroda methods results are more extreme. For example, it can achieve 92.3% accuracy, test, test accuracy for split six, while there is no combination with accuracy greater than 60% for split four. Next, we identify the metocytes which are common across all splits. In these tables, red color represents metocytes commonly identified across all the eight splits, while yellow means sites identified across seven splits. This can be seen in the table on the right. Among RFE selected features, there's a prevalence of colored sites, that is red and yellow, across most of the splits, while for Barota, it is just one site that is common, and uh, that site also appears um, in RFE selected features as well. This is the first metal site in both tables on the left. So in summary, using uh, recursive feature elimination, we identified more common site with consistent test accuracy, while Barota, more sites are local uh, to the split and have dynamic testing accuracy ranges. Next, we annotate the proteins involved in the signature metocytes uh, to see which pathway are enriched. Serum alb albumin is the modified protein commonly identified by both uh, recursive feature elimination and Barota methods across all splits, while aldolase A is identified uh, by recursive feature elimination across eight splits. And using reactome, we observed, observed that the pathway that these proteins commonly enrich is platelet degranulation. Currently, we are incorporating alternate data as well, for example, occupancy of PTM size to see if we get similar signatures and pathways. So this is an ongoing uh, project, and our plan is to apply the two-stage feature selection uh, pipeline discussed today to other PTM uh, types on diff and on different uh, target amino acids. In addition to studying individual sites in single OPTM uh, type, it is important to understand the dependencies between multiple modifications. One way is to build PTM co-occurrence regulation networks among uh, key PTM sites. 
We also plan to incorporate protein structure inf information in the predictive modeling. And we will also investigate the temporal dynamics of PTM across different treatment groups, for example, by cl clustering PTMs based on uh, different temporal profiles. Finally, I would like to thank the people involved in this uh, project. This is uh, truly a group effort. I would like to thank Professor Pepe Ping, uh, Howard Choi, Jay Wong, and Dominic Ng. Uh, if any ha anyone has uh, questions, I will be glad to answer them. Do we have any questions for the law? Hi, Bilal, this is Andrew here. Uh, nice talk. Um, I have uh, maybe two questions. So first, I might have just missed this, but what are the features that you're actually that go into your classifier? Uh, so the features are uh, methanine ex oxidation sites. It's it's the PTM sites. I thought that's what you're trying to predict. Uh, no, no. Prediction is is uh, is basically when uh, we're using to be using uh, training data to train using the reduce or the selected PTM sites, and the testing data set is uh, the, the accuracy that you are seeing is on the testing set. So we are predicting the uh, if the uh, correct PTM sites are uh, predicted on the test set. Right, but but again, the, the features that you're selecting. So the features are, are PTM sites, and the prediction is either it's a control or ISO treatment. Oh, okay, got it. Got it. So the question, okay. Um, so, so I guess then my, my next question would be, I mean, you know, I, uh, it, it seems to me that, that this is a pretty small data set, right, on, on the scale of machine learning and um, uh, would you agree with that? And if so, I, mean, I guess I'm wondering how confident you are that you know your conclusions with regard to the, the different feature selection methods would extrapolate to other data sets. Uh, yeah, uh, that's true. The the num the sample size particularly is not that big in our data set, so uh, that's why we instead of just uh, like resorting to a single uh, training and testing uh, percentage we try to apply to different uh, eight different uh, splits based on the genetic background and try to see if we can identify features which are commonly appearing across those splits instead of just uh, taking the accuracy because uh, because this feature is the sample size is small so accuracy may not like may not represent uh, uh, the confidence so that's why uh, it's better to consider the frequency as well. How frequent are these uh, uh, selected features are obtained across different splits and across different runs? But yeah, I totally agree that the number of sample size are on the smaller size. Got it, thank you. Yeah. 